This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Caradimos. We're going to talk about powers of I in this video. And the sections we're going to have in this video are the following. What is I? Powers of I. The cyclical powers of I. And simplifying expressions with I. All right, let's get to work. All right, let's talk about what is I. So let's talk about square roots. It turns out if um, we have a problem like the square root of 25, we know it's 5. How do we know it's 5? Because 5 squared is 25. So 5 times 5 is 25. Uh, we've got the square root of 64. It's 8. Because 8 squared is 64. So we know that we could take the square roots of these, of some numbers, they're really easy to do. Uh, but the problem we run into is if we take the square root of, let's say, a negative number. So I want to figure out what this is. Now, if you think the answer is negative 4, then you have to check it. You say negative 4 squared. Well, let's see, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Nope, I want negative 16. So you're going to try... 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. That doesn't work either. And you can't take negative 4 times 4 because when you take the square root, it's got to be the same number of times itself. So we can't do this. We say that there's no real solution. But there is a different type of solution. What we can do is take a look at the problem and kind of separate it into two parts. Let's separate out that negative. So if we take the square root of the negative and the square root of 16, do them separately, well, we know the square root of 16 is 4. And mathematicians say the square root of negative 1 is i. It's just an imaginary number. So what's the answer? It's 4i. So in other words, mathematicians try this little trick and it is to get around the square root of a negative they just call this a special value they say it's square root of negative one is i and it may seem like a little game and to get us around the negative which it is but it does have some useful purposes in the field of mathematics okay let's try a few more of those so let's say we're trying to find the square root of negative eighty one we know the square root of negative 81 is now going to be, well, let's see, if it was just 81, it would be 9. But because there's a negative underneath the radical, we say it's 9i. We could also do this with numbers that are not easy to find the square root of. Like, for instance, this problem. We could think of it as, of course, negative 1 times 27. So we could take a factor tree. Break of 27 is 3 times 9 circling the prime numbers. 9 is 3 times 3, again circling the prime numbers. So it looks like I have a negative 1, 3, 3, 3, all underneath the radical sign. So what I'm going to do is of course try to simplify this as best as possible. So what I'm going to do is take the square root of the pieces. So I know the square root of negative 1 is i, I know the square root of 9, right, because 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. And there's really nothing I can do with this last 3. So it's going to stay underneath the radical sign. I just have this 3 and i on the outside. So it's 3i radical 3. So sometimes we could even simplify radical expressions that have negative values. Just remember the negative value will create an i on the outside. Right. Let's talk about the powers of i. So what I'd like to do is take i to various powers. Well, we know i to the first is just plain old i. It's square root of negative 1 by definition. So let's figure out what is i squared. Well, i squared just means square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1. So if I simplify this, square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1. 
Okay, there you go. So let's see what's I squared. Well, it's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. And they're all square roots of these things. Well, I know these two are negative 1. So I have negative 1 times this fellow. Remember, this is just I. So this is just minus I. Okay, so it looks like I get minus I there. What's I to the fourth? I to the fourth is square root of negative one, square root of negative one, square root of negative one, square root of negative one. Now you know these two multiply together to get negative one. These two multiply together to get negative one. So the answer is negative one times negative one is one. Let's say what i to the fifth is. Square root of negative one, 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 square root of negative one. So multiply these all together. And let's see this, these two guys multiply to get negative one. These two guys multiply together to get negative one. And then I've got this this value that's left, which is just i. So the answer is, let's see, that's a negative times a negative is a positive, so it's just i. All right, so these four values have great value, i, i squared, oops, sorry, this was i cubed, I wrote square there, that's a cube. So these values have great value, and it turns out that we start to duplicate it the answers. Like if you do i to the sixth, we're going to get square root of negative one times square root of negative one, square root of negative one times square root of negative one, a whole bunch of square root of negative ones here. One, two, three, four, five, one more. So every pair I'm going to get negative one times negative one times negative one. So it's negative one, negative one, negative one. Multiply those all together, you're going to get negative one. So there is a bit of a pattern here, which I'm going to talk about in the next section. All right, in this section, we're going to talk about the cyclical nature of pi. So what I'd like to do is place some of the powers of i that we used from the last section and post them back again. Okay, so here they are. So if when we did some, the work from the last section, we found these values. And, and it turns out that there actually is a trend going on here. And uh, I want to just make sure that it is seen. So if I take i to the seventh, I'm going to have seven i's. I'm going to try to squeeze them all in here. Four, five, six, and seven. So when I multiply these guys, I'm getting a negative one. Multiply these guys, I'm getting a negative one. Multiply. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, missing one. There we go. So I multiply these two, I get a negative one. And I've got this thing sitting around, which is just, of course, i. That's just i. So if I multiply all these things left, I'm going to get, let's see, that's one. One times negative one is negative one. Negative one times i is just old negative i. So I could keep doing this, but I think by now we could see a pattern. Okay, and the pattern is kind of obvious when you really look at it. So we get i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, and if I did this again, I would get 1. So you could see there's a pattern. It goes from i, right, this is i right here, and it goes to negative 1 to negative i to 1. And then it just starts repeating all over again. Then it goes back to i, to negative 1, negative i, and then to 1. And it keeps repeating this over and over. And we say in this case that when things repeat in math, we call this cyclic. There's a cyclical nature to it. Okay, in order to demonstrate this, I actually have a cycle, or in other words, a wheel. I want to put that on here. In order to facilitate these powers of i, uh, I like to employ the use of this cycle, or in other words, this wheel. So we know they've got i, which is i to the first here at the top, i to the second, which we know is negative 1. We know that i cubed is negative i, 
we know that i to the fourth is one and we know back here in other words this would be i to the fifth would be still the same i i to the sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh twelfth thirteen fourteen and so on so in other words as we're doing greater and greater powers of i we rotate around the circle so what i would do is i would rotate around getting higher and higher values okay well you know the best way to you know use this wheel is to actually demonstrate it and actually show how it's used all right so and that's what i'll do like for instance if i wanted to do i to the i don't know let's say 13th so i would do let's see this would be i to the 4th 5th 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th 11, 12, 13. So it's just plain old I. I could do I to the, I don't know, how about uh, 28th? Well, let's see, what would I to the 28th be? Well, let's see, that would be I to the 4th, 8th, 12th, 16th, 20th, 24th, and of course 28th. All right, so in other words, it's just one. So this wheel comes in very handy as we're trying to find big powers. Obviously, you go clockwise using this wheel when you want to know positive powers. Okay, so if we're going to do negative powers, we're going to go backwards. We're going to go backwards through the wheel. Just keep in mind that this is like I to the third, I to the second, I to the first. So the next lowest number would be I to the zero. So this is the same thing as from 1, we go to 0, to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and so on. So what is i to the negative 7th? Well, let's see. That's 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. It's the same thing as i. What's i to the negative 10th? Well, let's see. There's uh, i to the 1st, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. It's the same thing as i squared, which is negative 1. So the wheel comes in handy for either positive powers or even negative powers of i. Okay, in, let's, in our next section, we'll simplify more complicated looking uh, expressions that deal with i's. In this section, we're going to simplify expressions with i. So let's start off with an expression. All right, so we have this 3i to the 13th. So in order to simplify this expression, what we're going to do, look at the uh, power of i separate from the problem. So this is really 3, and we've got an i to the 13th. So what I'd like to do is figure out, well, what's i to the 13th? Well, remember, this is i to the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. So really this i to the 13th is just i. So 3 times i is 3i. On to our next problem. Okay, so for this problem we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at this expression and pluck out of it this i to the 27th and figure out what the i to the 27th is. So now remember, every multiple of 4 is going to be on this 1, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4 is 1, 5, 6, 7, 8 is 1, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. So this is i to the 12th, i to the 16th, i to the 20th, i to the 24th, i to the 28th. Oop, we've gone too far. So I to the 24th, 25, 26, 27th. I to the 27th is I cubed, which is negative I. So all this stuff here is just negative I. Okay, so negative 5 times negative I is 5I. Negative times a negative is a positive. And there you go. I've got my answer written in complex form, A plus BI. In other words, I've got my real part, and I've got my imaginary part, and they're separate. Okay, let's take a look at another example. All right, continuing with the same pattern we've done with the other two problems, I'm going to view 
this i to the negative 23rd separate from the rest of the problem. So when you do this problem, remember that we're dealing with a negative power. So negative powers, instead of going clockwise like we did for positive powers, well, we're going to go in the opposite direction for negative powers. So I'm going to move in this direction for negative exponents. Okay, so let's do just that. So uh, I'm going to start off with i to the first, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, 7, 8. Right, this is negative 8. You can see the same pattern is working in reverse. So this is negative 8, it's negative 12, it's negative 16, it's negative 20. So this is negative 21, negative 22, negative 23. So all this inside the parentheses is just plain old i. Yeah, I can make my i a little bit better than that. Okay, so it's an i. Okay, so if I multiply i times negative 7, it's just negative 7i. There's really not much more I could do with it. It's an a plus bi form. In other words, I've got my real part my imaginary part separately. Okay, so we've looked at a variety of things. What is i? What are the powers of i? The cyclical nature of the powers of i? And finally, we simplified the expressions to deal with i. So, that concludes our video for powers of i. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other instructional videos, interactive quizzes, and text-based lessons. Take care.